Hey, what's going on guys? Today we're gonna to be checking out the former town site known as Tesla, which once housed California's largest coal mine. The origins of Tesla begin with the discovery of coal in Coral Hollow, a winding canyon located between Livermore and Tracy, California. In 1855, a group came to Coral Hollow to survey a proposed railroad route between San Francisco and Stockton. It was at this time that the group discovered a one-foot thick coal seam in the area. Shortly after, two San Francisco bankers offered the individual who was planning to build the route $4,000 for the property. Needing funds to build the railroad, which sadly never came to be, he accepted the offer. Almost immediately, the two bankers set up the California Coast Range Coal Mining Company and began mining. Unfortunately, this seam didn't yield much coal, and the operation closed up within four months. A few months later, a much larger coal seam was discovered, and soon after, multiple companies began exploring for coal in the canyon. This second round of exploration was much more successful than the first, however two main issues started to present themselves. Cheap foreign coal made it extremely difficult to make a profit in the domestic industry. And the second hurdle was that there was no reliable, low-cost means of transportation to haul the coal out of Coral Hollow. At this point, all coal was being wagoned out of the canyon and hauled to Moore's Landing and being ferried to San Francisco, or carried to rail and being transported to Stockton. With this being said, all mines except for the commercial mine closed up shop by the late 1860s as they just weren't able to turn a profit. And the only reason that the commercial mine stayed opened was the fact that the Central Pacific Railroad was using their coal to power their locomotives. And because the commercial mine was located more closely to the mouth of Coral Hollow, the Central Pacific Railroad actually extended a branch to the opening of the canyon, which made the operation economically viable. However, with a fire destroying the workings of the commercial mine in 1870, there were essentially no operations up until the late 1880s in Coral Hollow. What was needed to make coal mining operations here work was a large injection of capital and someone with know-how. And that person would be John Treadwell, a millionaire from San Francisco who made his fortune gold mining in Alaska. He not only had capital, but experience making suboptimal mines profitable. Long story short, he bought almost all the land in Coral Hollow and immediately went to work. He hired a skilled geologist who came to the conclusion that the largest coal seam in the area hadn't even been mined yet. It was estimated to cost around $50,000 to reach the seam. However, it was supposed to yield several million tons of coal. Treadwell decided to move forward with this. The location of the seam would be the area that would become the town of Tesla, named after the scientist who Treadwell greatly admired. The other component that made this operation work is the fact that Treadwell negotiated a deal to have a railway built directly to the Stockton Channel. And even though he had to front the cost to have the rail built, Shipping costs would be lower, and you wouldn't have to deal with any third parties. With these events underway, the town of Tesla began growing in a pocket on the western side of Coral Hollow. By 1897, the town was named Tesla and an application for a post office was officially submitted. Soon after, the population would grow to over 500 individuals, with many amenities being available, such as a general store, hotel, saloon, barbershop, cobbler, tailor, library, and even a hospital. Sadly, nothing remains today except for mining tailings and impressions in the ground where buildings used to be. This small flat area here on the left was actually the Chinatown of Tesla. There were several cottages, a bunkhouse, a laundry, and even a gambling and opium den. There are unfortunately no pictures of the Chinatown, but at least I was able to find some written history. Up next, we're going to be taking a look at Tesla Plaza, which is the small flat area here on the left next to the river. You might be thinking the same thing as me, which is why the heck did they build a plaza on the same level right next to a river? I assume it was because there wasn't a lot of level ground in the area, but this decision would come back to haunt them as the whole plaza flooded in 1911. With this being said, Tesla Plaza was the heart of the town as it contained many of the most important buildings in the area, including a bunkhouse, barbershop, library, saloon, hotel, lunch house, train depot, and store. Additionally, there used to be a small footbridge over the creek in the center of town that would allow the people of Tesla to cross during the rainy season. However, the vast majority of the time the creek was completely dry. Next, we're going to be taking a look at where Treadwell Row used to be. 
The trail that you see on the right side of the river used to be lined with houses almost its entire length. If you look closely, you can actually see some dark spots, which used to be the foundations of many of these homes. It was named Treadwell Row because the first house on the row closest to Tesla Plaza was actually that of John Treadwell's family. Next, we're going to be taking a look at two housing divisions, Jimtown, which was on the hill to the right, right where the road is going through up here, and Frytown, which was on the left side on the flat area to the left of the creek. Jimtown, which we're looking at here, was actually named after John Treadwell's brother, James. It contained 32 homes in the same style as those on Treadwell Row and was catered towards families. On the left here where this watering hole is, is where Frytown was located. It was named after Robert Fry, who was a director of the Tesla Coal Company. 25 family homes were located here in the same style as Jimtown and Treadwell Row. It's a little interesting that they named the housing divisions as towns, but they were indeed part of Tesla itself. As we pan around here, it gives you a little bit better idea how far away these towns were from the center of Tesla. While residents enjoyed how quiet it was in this area, they often complained how far the walk was to the center of town and students complaining how far it was to walk to school. In this picture here, you can see how Jimtown was kind of cut out of the side of the hill due to the fact that there wasn't a lot of level ground in the area. I wasn't able to duplicate it with the drone just how I wanted to, but the photo that you see here shows how Jimtown and Frytown were situated a ways away from the rest of Tesla. Next, we're going to be taking a quick look at Harrietville, which was another housing division, but it was located on the east side of Tesla instead of the west. Harrietville was located on this flat piece of land which Tesla Road currently snakes around. It contained 45 mixed cottages meant for families and single men. While not confirmed, it's speculated that the town was named after one of its early residents. Back towards the center of town, we're going to take a look at where the Tesla mining operations happened. While completely empty today, there used to be extensive mining operations and infrastructure here. All that really remains here today are mining tailings, gated portals, and a little bit of concrete foundation. Up until the mid-2000s, one of the tunnels was actually accessible. However, in 2008, the state boarded it up for public safety. With the concrete being situated to what I believe was the main tunnel, it's probably part of the infrastructure that brought the coal down to the rail. While it's not much, it's cool that there are actually some remnants of the mine or town. And I'll touch on it a little more later, but a big reason why there's nothing remaining of Tesla is because ultimately when the bank sold the property, everything was liquidated. With everything sitting in ruin today, it's interesting to think about how much capital was put into this place and how many individuals and families depended on its success. Sadly, prosperity at Tesla was short-lived due to a combination of factors. With the rise of oil after the turn of the century, coal started to become an inferior product in many cases. This, combined with the abundance of cheap foreign coal, made it extremely competitive, more so than ever, in the domestic market. The real demise began in 1902, when a coal bunker and briquette factory in Stockton burned down. With the Tesla Coal Company already being highly leveraged up until this point, the fact that they had to secure additional loans to rebuild these two facilities was the beginning of the end. In 1905, the briquette factory actually caught fire again, and at this point, there was no money to secure an additional loan to rebuild. With mining operations significantly dying down at this point, two years later, the bank that funded the Tesla Coal Company actually became insolvent. The bank that inherited the mine continued operations, but only with a skeleton crew. The straw that broke the camel's back was in 1911, when the creek flooded and wiped out nearly all of the infrastructure. While basic infrastructure was repaired, the overall cost of recovery was considered too high and the property was ultimately auctioned off. While some families continued to live in the area for a few years, the end of Tesla was ultimately in 1915 when the post office officially closed. The vast majority of the property at Tesla was purchased by a competing clay company who did so to dismantle nearly all of the infrastructure to make sure they had less competition. As time went on, the buildings that did remain either burned down, were relocated, or dismantled. I'm not sure why the history of Tesla seems to be swept under the rug, but it would be cool to see the area be open to the public, as well maybe some sort of museum or tour. Until then, I hope this video brings more awareness to the interesting history of this area. If you'd like a deeper dive on the history of Tesla, I'd highly recommend the book, 
History of Tesla, a California Coal Mining Town by Dan Mosier and Earl Williams. And if you made it to the end of this video, I'd like to thank you for watching. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. We have a lot more videos on the way and hope you'll check them out. Thanks again.